Hey, what's up guys? I'm Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about angular movement. All right, so in this tutorial, I wanna convert things where we have a horizontal and vertical parameter into an angle and a distance. So you notice I have sliders for angle and distance on here, and I can change this angle, and it'll change our displacement map to displace this like shadow that I made out of a texture layer around any direction I want. I can go farther, go shorter. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first, there's math. I can already hear the groaning, mostly from Sev. So you might have remembered this from high school, this whole Sokotoa thing. And you've probably thought it was useless, but you were wrong. We're gonna use this stuff right here to figure out the horizontal and vertical displacement so that we can get an angle. So the first thing we're gonna try to figure out is the horizontal displacement. So let's open this one up right here. In this case, that's called the run. And to figure that out, we're gonna assume our hypotenuse here is one. That's gonna allow us to use a little bit easier math and also to have a nice distance setting. All right, so we're gonna to try to find the adjacent over here. So if you don't remember, and you probably don't, cosine of the angle, which is here is represented by theta, is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Since we're setting that to one, just cosine of the angle equals the adjacent. So for now, we're just gonna do 25 degrees just cause that's what I felt like putting on here. So we have cosine of 25 degrees equals X, just to give you an example of how that works. So let's pull up our expression. All the expressions in here will be in the description down below. I think YouTube will allow me to post this one. They just don't let you use certain symbols because they suck. Just kidding. All right, so these first two things, I'm just bringing in my controls. And I'm setting A equal to the angle control and D equal to the distance control. So then we have X, which is going to represent our horizontal distance. And that's going to equal math.cosine of our angle. In this case, our angle is in degrees over here, and we need it in radians to get the proper length. So we have another function here, it's just degrees, two, radians, and in that parentheses we have an A, which is our angle control. And then our next line just takes that value that we get and multiplies it by the distance. And that's all there is to that one. So the next thing we'll do is vertical distance, and that has another one of these. So now we want to find the Y, which is opposite our angle. So in that case we're going to use sine. So we have sine of the angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. And again, the hypotenuse is one. So we're going to have sine of 25 degrees equal to Y. So let's look at our expression on that. Bring that into expressionist up here. And we have almost the exact same code. The only difference is instead of math.cosine, we're using math.sine and degrees to radians of the angle. And then we end with y times d, and that's it. That wasn't too bad, was it? Horrible. Bastard. So that allows us to convert our displacement into an angle. And why is that useful? Well, if I want this to actually displace, say, 30 degrees, because I know these are all 30 degrees, if I set this to 30 now, I can have this go exactly in line with the edge of this. Or if I want to have things that move with this, I don't have to like rotate them by something and figure out what they would go angularly. I can just animate the distance. So let's take a look at another example. I'm calling this one angular movement. Everything in this has that expression on their position. Because you can do the same thing with position. So instead of having an animated position, these all have an animated distance. Works exactly the same way. So if we bring the expression from position up into here, so you can see on this one I do pretty much the same thing, just combine the two. I bring in my angle and my distance controls. Then I have x equals math.cosine of my angle converted to radians. Then I have y equals math.sine of my angle converted to radians. Then I just have value, which is wherever it's at already, plus, and then I have x times d, comma, y times d. So then if you go up in here, and when you look at what I have animated, I just have my distance slider animated. So I can make this go further, further back this way, Undo that. And all of these little stars and all the stuff in the background and everything has that applied to it. In those cases, all the stars and stuff, they have a negative distance that just keeps increasing. Or decreasing. And that's pretty much it. So that's an example of one way that you could use this. So can you animate without doing this? Yeah, sure you can. But this makes it a lot easier and you can be precise with things. So if you have things that require that or you want to have a certain look, this makes it a hell of a lot easier. So I hope that helps you guys and that's just another thing you can add to your toolbox. Seth says you should add it to your workbench. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you follow the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.